Alright, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a swinging arm setup like this. I don't know what it's actually called, but we've seen several real life examples of stuff like this and animated versions of this. And this is going to be a very simple tutorial and it's just going to show you how to get the physics portion of it working correctly and not really a finished product. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. In this tutorial I will be using Blender 2.92 but the process is essentially the same uh, as far back as I can remember to like 2.6 something. Alright, let me go. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to you need to do is go ahead and get rid of your cube if you have it. Um, go ahead and hide your camera and hide your light if uh, you have those in your scene too just so it's easier to work with. Alright, first thing, let's add a cylinder. Add mesh and then a cylinder. Now this cylinder is going to be the main shaft that the swinging arms hang from. Now let's go ahead and adjust the diameter of this. Let's just press S for scale and then just bring it down till the diameter is about what you want, which is about right, yeah, about right there is about right. Alright, now I'm going to press 7 to go on the top side view and then I'm going to press, I want to rotate this on the x-axis so that it's going along the y-axis. R for rotate, x, 90, enter. Alright, now let's scale it on the y-axis so it's longer. S for scale, y, and then just drag it to about there doesn't have to be exact by no stretch of the imagination alright since these will be physics objects you will have to apply the scale after you change the size of it unless you're in edit mode now you can always tell if the scale has not been applied because all of these are not one all of these have to be one otherwise the scale is not applied to apply the scale press control A and then it brings up this dialog box and then click scale now the the scale is applied alright now go into front side view by pressing 1 I'm going to zoom in just a little bit alright now we need to add the arm the, an arm uh, to hang from this let's go ahead and uh, before but before we do that let's do one more thing to this Let's go ahead and turn this into a rigid body object. So with this um, selected, go over here to the physics tab, click on rigid body, and then change this from active to passive. Now we want this on passive because we do not want it to fall with gravity. All right, that's all we need to do for that. Now go back to front side view, and now let's start working on the swinging arm. Go to add, mesh, and we'll start with another cylinder. All right. Now, let's, uh, we're going to rotate this in a minute, but for now, let's go ahead and adjust the size of it on the Z axis. Size, Z, or S for scale, and then Z for the Z axis, and then just bring it to about right there. Alright, now let's go ahead and rotate this on the X axis. R for rotate, X, 90, enter. Alright, and now that's pretty much what we have. And it doesn't matter that these are actually intersecting with each other because we're going to disable the collisions. Or the collisions are disabled by default whenever we use constraints. So we don't have to worry about that. We don't actually, point being, we don't actually have to make a hole in this piece right here. It doesn't matter. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but whatever. All right, now let's go ahead and go into edit mode and then let's model the rest of this arm and we're going to do a very simplified version of a arm to swing it's just mostly just for an example go ahead and go into uh, bottom side view to go in the bottom view or let me back up just a minute if we want to go on top view we press 7 if we want to go in the bottom view we press control 7 see what I mean so right now we're in bottom view by pressing control 7 so with this larger cylinder selected press tab to enter edit mode 
come up here to face select and then we're going to select four faces this face this face this face and this face all right now go back into front side view by pressing one I'm going to zoom out and drag this up a little bit now I want to extrude these so press E for extrude and then just bring it down to about right here all right now I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and you see how this has this curve to get rid of this curve all we do is press with these faces selected is press S for scale and then Z for the Z axis and then zero and then that flattens it out basically you're just scaling those faces on the Z axis to zero which flattens it out to whatever the median uh, Z position was for all faces combined all right now press we want to go ahead and put a weight on the bottom here so the easiest way to go about that is just with all these faces selected press E for extrude and then press enter now press S for scale and then just bring it out to about right there and then press E for extrude and then just bring it down to about right there and now we have a counterweight on the bottom see what I mean all right now press tab to exit edit mode and all of these are not showing one so we need to apply the scale since this is going to be a physics object control a apply the scale all of them are showing one we're good to go all right now what we need to do we need to connect these objects these two objects with a constraint and the type of constraint we're going to use is a hinge because we want this arm to be able to swing we want it to be able to swing like this but we don't want it to be able to swing like this so we're going to use a hinge constraint all right so with this selected shift select this one so that both of them are selected I need to back up I forgot we still need to turn this one into a rigid body object so select this one click on rigid body and we can pretty much keep everything the same just all you have to do is just turn it into a rigid body object all right now let's go ahead and select make sure this one's selected and then shift select this object and then come up here to object come down here to rigid body and then choose connect now down here it brings up this dialog box change this from fixed to hinge keep this on center and then select it to active change that to chain by distance all right now what we need to do the hinge constraints which this object let me go ahead and put a wireframe so you can actually see it the hinge constraints they rotate on the z-axis so essentially right now um, this won't actually this arm won't actually rotate correctly because the constraint needs to be rotated we need to turn the hinge so with this constraint selected we need to put the z-axis in the direction in the y direction that way this arm can rotate around the z-axis so all we have to do is just press R for rotate and then X for the x-axis and then 90 enter and see now this arm right here can rotate around the z-axis see what I mean all right now what we need to do go ahead and press five pardon me one to go not five press one to go into front side view now select the swing arm currently the origin point is right here in the center where we need it to be right and it's in that point because we started off with this part and then edit edit it the rest of it in edit mode but the center of origin stayed in the same place 
Now we will change that here in a minute, but before we change that, let's go ahead and rotate this on just if we go to, if we press one to go in the front side view, we're looking at it from this perspective. Now we can press five to go in and out of orthographic and perspective, but it won't make any difference. As long as we're looking at at front side view, now we can press R for rotate, and then we can just rotate this up to about that position. That way it can fall down and swing. See what I mean? All right, now that we have this rotated, let's go ahead. Well, actually, I'm going to back up just a bit, just a minute. Press Control Z to undo what we just did. Control Z. Now, I'm going to rotate this a specific amount. Rotate Y on the Y axis and then 90. It doesn't matter if it's which side it goes, it really doesn't matter. Or we can go ahead and uh, rotate it on the negative, a negative degree. That way it's swinging out the same direction as we did, had it before. So press R, Y, minus 90, and then it's back over that way. All right. Now, with this selected, let's go ahead and change the origin point. Object, set origin, origin to center of volume. And now see the origin point moved right here, which means this is the center of mass or the, the balance point. You could basically put your finger right here and the object would balance if it was a real object, obviously. All right, now, if we'd done this correctly, if I was to press play right now, this arm should swing down around this object. Press play, and it's swinging. And gravi gravity is controlling it, essentially. All right, now let's go back to the beginning. Let's say we want to add uh, a few more of these swinging arms. So select, select the swinging arm, and then shift select this constraint. All right, go into top side view. Press G for grab, and then Y for the Y axis, and then just bring this to about right here, all right? And then press Shift D to duplicate, and then bring this, and then Shift, pardon me, I need to press Control Z to back up just one minute. Go ahead and press Control Z once until you just see this right here, not two of them and then press shift D and then Y that way you can duplicate it on the Y axis and then just move it to about right here and then press shift R which is a repeat command of the last thing you've done and you can just do that until you basically fill up your entire uh, uh, bar. Now you can adjust them if you want to, but this is just for an example. Mine's kind of hanging off, but it really doesn't matter. Alright, now what we want to do, we want to make, if we keep all these the same length, they're going to swing the same speed. So we need to adjust the length on this one, on these. So the easiest way to adjust the length, because we can't just press don't do this right now, I'm just showing you as an example. We can't just press S for scale because it moves the um, it moves the end away from it. So we have to go into edit mode. So select this one and press tab to enter edit mode and then press B for box select and then select around the end. And then press G for grab and then X for the X axis and then minus 0.25 enter something like that or you can do 0.5 or whatever length makes sense but make it a number that you can easily remember that way you can make each one that amount shorter than the previous one know what I mean now press tab to exit mode select this one 
and then press tab to enter edit mode. Press B for box select, left click to drag, select this one, press G for grab, X for the X axis, and then this time, 0.5, pardon me, minus 0.5, enter. That way this one's twice as, uh, it's 0.25 plus 0.25 in the X direction. I hope I'm not butchering that up too much. All right, now press tab to exit out of mode. Select this one. Press tab once again. B for box select. All right. And then G for grab. X for the X axis. And then minus 0.75. Enter. All right. You can see the pattern of what I'm doing. Now this one's going to be obviously minus 1. Select it tab to enter edit mode, B for box select, left click to drag, and then G for grab, X minus 1, enter. Tab to exit edit mode, select this one, tab to enter edit mode, B for box select, left click to drag, G for grab, X for the X axis, minus 1, 0.25 enter tab exit edit mode now if we was to go on the front side view or we don't have to go on the front side view I'm going to go ahead and change this to solid view so we can see it better they're all pretty much the same except each one is a little bit shorter than the other alright now if we was to press play they all start falling but because they're a different length, they eventually start to deviate from each other. Now let me go ahead and bring this up just a little bit. And I'm going to adjust this to, let's say, 2000. Of course, you can adjust it however you want, however many frames you want in your animation. But I'm just going up to 2000 so we can see it play out, essentially. But before we can actually press play, we need to change the physics settings come up here to this tab and then come down here to the rigid body world and in the cache settings or cache settings we need to change this to 2000 also all right before we go any further at this point I'm going to press file save and save this project and uh, and I'm just going to give it a generic name Toot. That way, if it crashes for some reason, we can always go back and do it and start where we left off at. Now, for some reason in 2.92, the sub steps per second is set to 10, and 10 is way too low in my opinion. For something like this, 120 is fine, and solver iterations is probably fine at 10 unless these swing arms are extremely heavy. In this case, they're not heavy, so that's fine. Because these solver iterations, they help. I, I, I won't be able to explain exactly what it does, but if these constraints are not holding these in place perfectly, you probably need to turn up solver iterations. And sub steps can also solve that issue too. But generally, this is probably fine for this. Now, if I was to press play, now we can see it playing out. But now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, just so this plays out just a little bit quicker. I'm going to go ahead and change this to uh, 121, and then back to 120. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want it want it to make sure that it doesn't try to use the old information that's right here. By changing it to a certain other number and then back, it basically tells it to redo all this instead of skipping over it. All right, but I'm going to come up here to the camera or to the printer tab and then change this to 60 frames per second. That way it just will play through a little bit quicker. Now if I press play, you can see them start to deviate and of course you can make the deviation between the the swing arms 
quicker or happen more quickly by making the length of the arms, the difference in length of the arms more dramatic. And of course you can obviously make the materials however you want and you can put your little arms like uh, like the arm coming down to like if it was a, a swing set or something you know what I mean but this is just mostly about these swinging portions now what we could also do is these arms are actually slowing down a little bit too fast in my opinion so with one of these arms selected come over here to the physics tab and then down here where it says dynamics where it says rotational uh, dampening I believe that's actually what it says let me pull this up. but anyway these are dampening settings if we change this to a lower number like 0.025 it will not have as much drag now we want to press shift select this one select this one. well actually we're going to go about it a different direction start with this one shift select shift select shift select shift select shift select and then this one's last and the reason why we want this one last is because we've already changed the setting on this one so now we can just press control uh, we can come up here to object and come down here to rigid body and then uh, where is uh, copy from active click on copy from active and now the settings that we changed on this one which we changed it from 0.1 to 0.025 we just applied it to the rest of these also just a little shortcut alright now if we go back to the beginning and press play now these should slow down less quickly even though the deviation is still happening just as quickly but there's less dampening force on the rotation which means it will the entire thing will swing longer all right but I guess that's pretty much it I'm not gonna go through the materials for this because I'm just mostly teaching how to set up the constraints and how the physics properties and all this works if you have any questions in regards to how this works let me know and I will do my best to try to answer you in the comments I guess that's it later people